Let's look at how we can set up and use adaptive views in Axure. You've certainly heard about responsive web design, as your website should be accessible on any device regardless of screen size. But to accomplish this, you'll need to design a site that resizes its layout and rearranges its content as the browser window gets smaller or larger. Adaptive views are the most important new feature released in Axure RP7 and they give us the ability to create adaptive web designs which snap to new layouts as they reach certain widths. Adaptive views are visually represented by vertical width markers. Once you reach the edge of a particular screen width, the layout will snap to the next size arrangement. These are called breakpoints, as many web developers would say. After you set up these breakpoints, all you need to do is take the content and lay it out differently at each size. To do this, we need to click the Manage Adaptive Views button in the top left corner of the canvas and start adding new adaptive views. In the Adaptive Views dialog, you can set up your adaptive views using presets, for example large display, landscape phone, etc. Or you can enter your own values. The condition field specifies whether the view will be shown if the browser width is less than or greater than a specified width or height. The inherit from field specifies the parent of this view. A widget in an adaptive view inherits its location, size and style from its location, size and style in the parent view. If you make a rectangle red in the parent view, it will be red in the child view. If you make it red in the child view, it will not affect the parent view. If you make it red in the child view and then blue in the parent view, the child will stay red because you've already overwritten in that view. The base view is the default view for your project. Every other view will be a child, grandchild, etc. of the base view. Generally, you will start designing for your project in the base view and then adjust the widgets as needed in the child views. So what we are doing now is creating different child views for this desktop first prototype. Coming back to our interactive prototype, first we need to configure the breakpoints in our responsive design. Therefore, we can take a look at the website and use the Inspect Element tool in Chrome so that we can see exactly when the views change. I already did this and I noted four major changes that happen. When the width is less than 992 pixels, then 768 pixels, then 600 pixels, and 480 pixels. After creating the adaptive views, all we need to do is take each individual view and resize, rearrange, and in some situation redesign the items accordingly. I will do this for now, and you can find the responsive RP file in the exercise files. As you can see, I took into account the width marker at which we show the limit until you can include elements in order to be seen on the specific screen. Anything beyond that limit will not be visible. In the finished prototype, you will see that there are widgets that I haven't really mentioned accordingly and they go beyond that limit. You can see all of these elements highlighted in red in the widget manager. Now let's have a quick preview so you can see adaptive views in action. So now, you can see how just by adjusting widgets, changing the layout and changing some sizing and styling, based on what you need for each different layout, you can create beautiful responsive prototypes. I reworked some elements, especially for the 600 pixels and 480 pixels adaptive views, having in mind that these are for mobile 
and there is less screen state that we can work with. Please check out each adaptive view in the RP file so that you can see the behaviors of these new elements.